this next lesson is going to be about thermal equilibrium. And with thermal equilibrium, as the word says, you have two temperatures being equal. And if you have two different temperatures, usually those two different temperatures come from two different substances. So you can always identify a thermal equilibrium problem if you are looking at two different substances and how that energy was transferred, okay? So just as a reminder, remember that Q uh, represents calories or joules of energy. And we know that hot objects always transfer their energy to cold objects. And so we can look at that hot object as Q lost and that uh, object that gained that heat as Q gained, all right? And when we actually write this equation, we actually can write it as Q lost equals negative Q gained, all right? Remember, this is an exothermic reaction. For that reason, it has positive energy coming out. And this one here is an endothermic process. It gains that energy. And so for that reason, it has that negative sign, OK? So a little counterintuitive. Knowing that Q lost equals Q gained, for example, in my example, of if I were to shake someone's hands, I have very cold hands, um, and someone else has warm hands. The heat from that other person's hand will actually be transferred to my hand until both of our hands are the same temperature. So the person who has those warm hands is going to have that Q lost, and I, who have cold hands, will be the Q gained. So we can rewrite this with, the, with remembering that Q equals mc delta t. We can rewrite this equation to look like this, that Q lost from one substance can be the same as a negative mc delta, ooh, delta t, not an at, okay? So it's more or less replacing these q values uh, with the mc delta t. So we're going to actually go through a problem where we're doing this. So here you have a problem where it uh, says uh, you have 12 piece of, a uh, 12 gram piece of aluminum with a heat capacity of 0.215 calories per gram uh, Celsius is at 70 degrees. It's placed in a beaker that contains 35 grams of 15 degree water. What temperature will they come to thermal equilibrium? So first task is to identify whether or not this is a thermal equilibrium problem. Well, the fact that you have thermal equilibrium as part of your question is a dead giveaway. But the second dead giveaway is that you have two substances. You have aluminum, and it's placed in a beaker with water. So we have two different substances. We know we need to set up the equation um, where you have those two equaling each other. So first step, find how many substances. And we have found two. So for that reason, we know that we need to do the mc delta t equals negative m c delta t. And just a reminder, remember delta t equals the final temperature minus the initial temperature, okay? So F stands for final, I stands for initial. So our first step is setting up the equation, okay? So we have our m c delta t equals m c delta t uh, over here. And I'm going to always have whatever object loses the heat, lost Q be on this side, and gained Q be on this side. And I can always tell by this being the hot object and this being the cooler object. And when I look at my equation, it looks like the aluminum is 70 degrees, so that's the hot object. And my water is at 15 degrees, that's the cooler object. So let's start putting in numbers. So this is, as a reminder, I'll write myself aluminum, and this is going to be on this side, H2O. So I have 12 grams of aluminum, and it has a heat capacity of uh, 0.215 cal grams. All right, and now I need to get that delta T. So in this case, it looks like it's at 70 degrees, and we want to know what its final temperature is. So we don't know its final temperature yet because it hasn't reached equilibrium. So I have Tf 
being my final temperature minus what initial temperature was, was 70 degrees Celsius. Okay, now I make that equal to my negative. And this here, in terms of water, I have 35 grams of water. And I know water is one cal per gram C. I should probably multiply these, but that's fine. Um, and then I am looking here for its final temperature as well. Remember, it started as being 15 degrees Celsius. I'm going to add one more there. And now um, we want to see what it is. So this looks like a scary algebraic equation, um, but it isn't. Okay. Keep in mind, we know that at thermal equilibrium, the thermal the temperature of the water will be exactly the same as the temperature of the hand uh, of the aluminum because they are temperature equal, thermal equal. Okay, so you will have the same number in this. So if I do the actual multiplication, it works out that I multiply my numbers. You have 2.58 TF minus 70. So I simply multiply these numbers together equals negative 35 TF minus 15 degrees Celsius. I should get that Celsius there too. Okay. And if I do my calculations even further, that works out to be 2.58 TF minus 180.6. And what I did was use the distributive property in math. Yes, math comes in handy. And negative 35 TF minus 525. Again, I multiplied these together using the distributive property. And that works out to be 37.58 TF equaling 7005.6. And TF by itself works out to be 18.08. Celsius because I simply divided uh, these here to get TF by itself. And so my final answer is the thermal, the temperature that they will both become, that aluminum and the water, will be 18.8 degrees. Okay, so TF stands for that. And that's more or less how you calculate thermal equilibrium. For the quiz that you have online, you're going to be uh, going through some of these problems and I strongly suggest that you have this up and see how you would set it up. The most difficult part or the part that students struggle with the most is getting, making sure that you always have your initial temperature being on the right side and your final temperature being on the left.